Well, it's Indy 500 this weekend. Empty grandstands. Just cannot even begin to imagine what that's going to be like. But knowing the Americans will do quite a good job of trying to make it look like the show that it is. Don't forget, when, the, when it's normal years, the Indy 500 is still the world's biggest single one-day spectator sporting event. Still miss it as a venue for Formula One as well, but that's another story. So to get a feel for what the current car is like, what it's like to drive at 230 miles an hour around the speedway, and what it's like to be lining up alongside Fernando Alonso on the 33 car starting grid, I spoke to James Davison, who's making one of his annual appearances in the Indy 500. Doesn't do a lot of single-seater racing, more's the pity, because this guy is really, really talented. I don't think Max Verstappen would be a close buddy of James if he wasn't that good. James at the moment has been racing a bit of NASCAR Cup. He's been doing some midgets, some sprints. I would go so far as to say one of the most talented drivers not to be in Formula One. Anyway, James always goes well at Indy. He's gone well again in qualifying, given his lack of mileage, given that this is a one-off race he's doing with Dale Coyne. So I spoke to him about the prospects for the race, what sort of race it's going to be, how it might pan out, and what these cars are going to be like in race conditions. James, good to see you. First lap, 230.9 miles an hour. That's seriously quick. Yeah, uh, it was. The car was very fast. So the Dale Coyne, Rick Ware, Bird Bellati team did a fantastic job, just like last year. Uh, but our challenge this year was getting the balance to stay under us for the four laps. And that's been a challenge overall this year. I think the aero screen it adds 60 pounds um increases the center of gravity and it and it makes the loads on the right front tire higher um also the steering weight is heavier as well and um i was able to do two laps full throttle and then i needed to start it to lift uh, so that hurt our average quite a lot because we dropped from the 230s down to the 227s and 26s and we gave it another go, uh, did another attempt and um, even with some changes, uh, adjustments to the car, it, we still weren't able to get the balance to stop deteriorating. So anyway, we gave it our best shot in qualifying and we're starting toward the back but on the same row as Fernando Alonso and the reigning Indy 500 champion Simon Pagano. So I'm not the only one that it has fought some adversity. Yeah, it's pretty incredible that the three of the four Penske's are outside of the top 20. I can't remember when it, any time that that's happened. They've always been in the fast nine, especially in this modern era. Uh, but it just goes to show how competitive IndyCar is. It, it's incredibly competitive. I was aware that it was going to be a little tougher or likely to be a little tougher than last year. I wasn't expecting to qualify 15th or in the top half of the field again. But then again, I knew that this team are underdogs and they do a lot with a little. Um, so my speed on the first lap was good enough for a top 15 but yeah just the average speed wasn't so so you got Fernando alongside you on the grid that should be very interesting and of course he had that big shunt in practice before qualifying I know all about that because I was the first car behind him <laughs> so I had to avoid him crashing down the track and uh, thankfully uh, the crash wasn't too bad and there wasn't a big debris field but um, uh, Fernando and I, we know each other. We certainly wave to each other. We've had a little conversation uh, in the F1 paddock um, a, a year or two ago. I think it was 2018, yeah, the year that he, that he took a year off. Um, we're friendly, but yeah, we haven't gotten to know each other, obviously, because we're just busy doing our own things. And, um, you know, he comes and races once a year on a different team. So. Uh, yeah, that's exciting. It certainly uh, makes the disappointment, I would say, from qualifying uh, not so bad, knowing that I've got a two-time world champion and an Indy 500 winner alongside me. Did you see what happened, what led up to that accident? He said, he, I think he said he hit a curb going into turn four, is that right? Yeah, exactly. So it's become very difficult with this current aero package since 2008 to follow cars. The car drafts slipstreams incredibly well, a lot stronger than the previous 
aero packages from 2012 to 2017. Uh, but then in the corners, uh, you get a lot more, you lose the front end, you lose your front downforce a lot. And it's extremely difficult to get the front end to work. There's probably only about, oh, let's call it 20% of the field that have cars that they can really do something with. And the majority of us are sitting there just kind of stuck in turbulent air. and. We're all trying, we're never giving up on and off the track and you're, you're looking for every fine detail that you can. So we're trying to drive the car as low as we can in the corners to get some clean air on the front wing um, and turn in from right up against the wall and just straighten the corner out as much as you can. And if you slightly get it wrong by touching the inside curb, there's a big camber change on that. Um, or you don't lift enough and you drive yourself into some pretty heavy, dirty air uh, and then into the marbles, you can find yourself in trouble. So yeah, in, in Fernando's case, he just went a slightly too low and I saw him get sideways and the angle that he was heading towards the wall and I'm like, oh man, this guy's going in. I wasn't sure it was him at, at first. But um, yeah, glad that uh, it wasn't a bad accident in the end. How much of a factor is the aero screen in what you've just described in the difficulty in running closely with other cars? It was already difficult uh, from the get-go in 2018 and 19 before the aero screen. And I would say that it's made the right front tire, at least on my car, what I'm feeling, it's made it give up an extra 20 or 30% sooner. You can feel it the moment you leave the pits even when you're on fresh tires in the past you would get some free balance and extra grip for a couple of laps where you could really make some headway in traffic and then it would wear away after two or three laps i mean immediately now even on brand new tires you can feel that the right front in dirty air is is graining across the road so a lot of it is going to be uh, just management of, of your tyres, not trying to make the car do something that it doesn't want to do, um, and yeah, just being patient and staying out of trouble. And what about the heat factor now? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so I've come from doing six NASCAR races in the Cup Series, and those cars get very hot with the front engine and all the you know aluminum and steel aluminium as we say whatever they're made out of but um uh i've felt some pretty substantial heat and the aero screen cooling is amazing i feel like the cooling on a super speedway is even better than uh it was prior to an open cockpit because now you have the the hose going into the top of your helmet and it's forcing the cold air in um, and the vision is fantastic there's no distortion uh, and I don't notice that I'm really driving with a screen on the car it, they couldn't have done a better job IndyCar and Red Bull together well that's good to hear James there's a bit of talk about Honda party time during qualifying did that filter down to where you were and how do you think the Chevys and the Hondas will stack up in the race uh, so already just running in traffic, it seemed like the Chevys were strong. They appeared to be strong off the corner. And then the Hondas started to get stronger towards the end of the straight. But at that time, it was a little too late to use that strength. So I believe that Hondas are aware, as strong as they were in qualifying, that they had some improvements to make in race trim. So I believe they've, you know, looked at that throughout the week um, but in terms of knowing where everyone's going to be at it, I guess it's no different than F1 until everyone gets on the track at the same time and everyone's um, you know showing their hand uh, when it's go time uh, that's when we'll know. I imagine it's a completely different world this year with the whole COVID protocol in place but Putting, trying to put that to one side, do you notice any difference in feel now to the Indianapolis Speedway and indeed 
to IndyCar in general now that Roger Penske owns it all? Uh, so since I only do this race once a year, it's a little premature for me to say because I've only been in the paddock now for a week and it's obviously heavily restricted with the COVID regulations and restrictions. Uh, but I have seen some of the improvements around the speedway to the fan experience areas and I guess publicly it's come out that the Penske Corporation has spent $15 million on the speedway. Um, so that's fantastic and I just I feel a bit sorry that Roger isn't uh, getting the fruition, um, obviously in the immediate sense, to his investment and passion for IndyCar and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But 2020 has been a challenge for nearly everyone and and uh, I'm sure he'll get what he richly deserves out of uh, you know the blood, sweat, and tears that he puts into his ultimate passion that is Indianapolis. Finally, James, and I know you're busy, but it's interesting to know if you had any messaging from your buddy Max Verstappen. Uh, yeah, look, we um, obviously he's a very busy guy, and I don't uh, try and create conversation with him. But when I announced my uh, indie deal and put it on. Instagram, he commented, shake and bake, baby. So that was nice. And yeah, I mean, Max has just been such a fantastic friend. He's such a great human being, humble, down to earth person. Obviously, he comes across feisty when he's in, um, you know, competition mode. But on, I'm just uh, very blessed to have a friend in him. Um, I can't say enough about uh, the the person that he is uh, for the privileges that he's had in his in his life that's I think where you really get a good judge of character on someone and um, yeah he's he's always been supportive and when I last saw you at the Australian Grand Prix uh, driving the S five thousand uh, I was driving down the pit lane in practice and there was Yoss and Max sitting on the Red Bull pit wall giving me the thumbs up and waving to me as I drove down the pit lane. So, yeah, it's great to have friends and supporters uh, like the Verstappens. Well, you wouldn't have supporters like that unless there was something behind it, James. So hats off to you for what you achieve and what you are achieving at Indy and hope you have a great race on Sunday. Yeah, thank you. Well, like always, you've always got to have a, a great team and group of supporters behind you and I'm fortunate to have that. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm going to play the long game like I usually do. 500 mile race. Um, you know, if I'm not as competitive as I'd like, well, I'm aware how you can get a result. We've seen it at the speedway. So many different ways you can get a good result um, aside from just outright speed and performance. So I appreciate your your support as well. I heard about you long before we met. You're winsome and you're young, at least that's what they say.